What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. Every single week, I interview top real estate professionals, top entrepreneurs, and strip top badasses out there dominating their space. And today, guys, we got another top badass here on the podcast. So this is somebody that I've known for a while, a personal friend of mine, but a you know entrepreneur, real estate professional. Now, our guest today, just to give a, a quick backstory, which we'll jump into in the interview here, but has been licensed since 1997. Um, started his own brokerage back in 2000 and has just been continuing to grow and adapt and expand through all these changes and shifts that we've seen between you know that time and that journey and just continuing to crush it. So really stoked and honored to have my friend Raymond Nato on the podcast. Welcome to the podcast, my friend. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Joshua. I, I totally appreciate everything you do having me on to share. I uh, can't wait to share uh, my story with everybody. And uh, um, I, 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 I just... Uh, totally, totally grateful that uh, you, you have me on your podcast. Yeah, man. No, I'm excited, dude. And, and you know, I, I, I got a lot I want to cover with you because it's you're doing a lot of really you know big things today. You've done a great job about adapting and, you know, and how you're leveraging the online space. And this is all stuff that we'll get into. But, you know, with Facebook ads, also with Google My Business, that, you know, is just becoming so powerful. Um, um, but, you know, before we jump into all that, I'm always intrigued in our guest's backstory and, and you know, rewinding the clocks uh, uh, and just kind of going through your journey because it, it, you've been through a lot of shifts. I mean, if we look at your career, you know, you've been through the dot-com bubble, you've been through 9-11, you've been through the great financial crisis, you've been through, you know, this whole COVID debacle. And then now we're getting ready to enter, you know, or, or I shouldn't say getting ready to, we are entering, you know, this next, whatever they're going to claim and classify and call this next, you know, deep recession that we're, or potentially depression that we're entering into. You know, so you're, you, you know, obviously you've had a shift and you've had to adapt and, and I'm sure that there was a lot of challenges you had to overcome and, you know, so forth. So if we run the clocks, man, you know, um, I know you jumped in the business in 97, but what led you into the real estate business? Like why, why real estate? Sure. So um, I, I kind of was born into real estate. Um, my mother was a realtor um, as far as since I was a little baby, I think even born. Um, so she, I remember I was 10 years old. That was probably as far back as I can remember, <laughs> you know, um, but I was at open houses with her and, you know, she would take me out every weekend. I would sit there and complain and, you know, it, it wasn't my favorite thing to do, but I, I just remember being in, in that, in, in that field, doing that, uh, um, those open houses. And I started um, just getting interested as, as time went on, as I got older, went through high school and, um, you know, I, I, was a contractor at that point after high school and I started building houses. So um, after I started building houses uh, for a while, I got my real estate license um, because it was just natural, <laughs> yeah, a natural thing, you know? Um, so, you know, back in the day when my mother was doing it, um, you know, leads were easy, man. It, it was, there was no computers. There was no Google. There was no YouTube. There was, there was nothing, no cell phones. They didn't even exist. I don't even think they were a thought um, back in the seventies, you know, um, at that time, if you wanted to buy a house or you wanted to uh, list a house, you actually had to list it. I think this is where the multiple listing service came in. I, don't, I bet you a lot of listeners don't even remember this, this but uh, it's a, it's an encyclopedia. It's about this thick. And if you wanted to list a house, you had to actually have a realtor put it in that book in the multiple listing service. There was uh, there was no other way uh, at that time. So it, all you had to do if you wanted leads is just go do some desk time at an office somewhere and you got all the customers you wanted. You didn't have to do any advertising. You know, it, it was uh, I wish it was a little easier like that now. But now, you know, the Internet came and uh, things changed and, you know, um, and, and then, you know, we have the big Z uh, going on that changed uh, real estate for a while. But um, so, yeah, it, it, it was leads were super easy back then. Um, fast forward like a, a decade um, <laughs> or, or two, uh, we started opening our own brokerage. It was Care Realty. Um, we came up with Care because all of my kids and my wife, um, Kelly, Edward, Alicia and um, Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Kelly, Alicia, Edward, and Ray. So Care Realty. Um, and so we used that and it worked out really well. Um, and back in the early 2000s, again, leads were kind of really easy. Uh, all you had to do was 
put uh, a ad in the magazine, uh, Homes Magazine, one of those free magazines you would get at the grocery store, which I don't see too many of anymore. Um, but, you know, I had all the leads I, I could handle. And then so I started giving leads out to all of my agents. And then my, my business started to grow. Um, everybody started coming for those leads. Uh, and, and like, they just kept coming. They just kept coming, you know. Um, and things were doing really, really great um, until, you know, 08 came about, you know, the, the housing crash of 08. Um, how many of you remember the, the crash of 08? You know, I mean, that was like a devastating time in, in my life. You know, I had to um, figure stuff out. You know, I mean, there was no more business. Um, the, the, the housing ads weren't, uh, the magazines weren't really bringing in enough uh, to supply everybody. every So I was losing my agents. They were going um, uh, into different careers because they weren't making it. Um, so I, I think that time we lost a lot of agents in 2008, um, the, just around the country. I think <laughs> almost half of them dro dropped out of the industry, you know. Um, so I shifted uh, uh, kind of like you did um, over to the REO side. Um, and well, we first started with uh, mortgage inspections. Um, because I was a contractor, um, they had me doing uh, insurance loss inspections um, and then mortgage late inspections. So we actually got so busy with different uh, companies um, that we were doing 5,000 mortgage late inspections a month. Uh, we had three different crews. Um, it, it was just night and day, holidays, weekends. We had no life. You know, um, you, you just go out and do the inspections, come back, work all night, putting in all the photos. Um, it, it was just grind, 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 very stressful time. Um, but we actually did very, very well um, during the crash when a lot of people were, were um, not doing so well. We were making probably more money than we've ever made in our career um, doing all of that. Um, and then we got into, um, you know, listing the REO properties and then um, we also, because I was a contractor, I was, I hired crews to clean out all the foreclosures and to board them up and to get them market ready. Um, so it was kind of a, a big operation at that time. And it, it was really good until 2000, say 13, 2014, uh, when everything came crashing back down, uh, every, the economy started getting better. Um, and uh, there wasn't any more foreclosures uh, going on. They, they started paying me less. So it, it just wasn't working. So I had to kind of shift again. Um, you know, 2013, 2014 was a very slow year for us, um, but we made it through, um, you know, early in, early in my, my early 2000s, uh, I was diagnosed with um, degenerative bone disease. So um, it started eating my back one disc at a time. I don't know if you know what degenerative bone disease, but it, it's it's like all all of the 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 middle juicy parts of your spine starts leaking out, and you know your your bones just start deteriorating. Uh, my mother had had it happen to her, so it's genetic. Um, her she lost her hips. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that have kind of the similar thing, but. Um, I had 14 discs in my back that were now herniated um, and leaking fluid all over the place and in my spine, which causes pain. Uh, it bur like burns the nerves. Um, and then um, I had a few in my neck, but um, nothing was going to stop me. You know, I was in a wheelchair at that point and a walker. Um, but, you know, I still loved real estate. I was still on the phones. I was still, you know, uh, I was still doing what I had to do. You know, I wasn't out door knocking um, or, or doing the things, but, um, you know, I was still making those calls. I was calling the expires, the for sale by owners. And, you know, we, we at that time, um, our big thing was 4%. Um, uh, and it, it just, it helped a lot to, to get a lot more listings in because, you know, I wasn't able to really do a whole lot, but um, I was really good at talking. Um, so, you know, my wife here, Kelly, she is really the, the biggest hero in this whole uh, scenario. She's got to be one of the strongest women I, I know. I mean, she has to be to put up with me, you know, um, but she helped me through all the good times, the bad times, um, you know, we actually in 2013-ish, 2000, well, right when we, we started, um, 
you know, coming down off of things. We weren't making a lot of money at that point. Um, so we actually owed a lot of taxes uh, to the IRS because we had enough money to pay the crews and to pay the payroll, but we didn't have enough money to pay the government. So it, it was very, you know, that bill got higher and higher and higher. And finally, you know, they came knocking on our door. That was a very scary day in our life too. In 2014, um, you know, they came knocking and say, hey, we're shutting you down. You know, you're, you're all done. You don't want to pay taxes. So um, that, that kind of ended that whole thing in 2014 for us. So, um, you know, I found myself um, you know, still in a lot of pain. I was, uh, I was um, still in a wheelchair. It, it, things were really, really bad for us. We, we found ourselves going into depression. Um, and in 2015, we found out, you know, that was a year of a hundred inches of snow um, in, in the Boston area. We were in Massachusetts at the time. And um, so a hundred inches of snow within two weeks. And, you know, I, I found out my, my back, pain hurts uh, the cold hurts it makes it makes your bones and your muscles tighten up and um you know i just couldn't do it anymore i was slipping on the ice every year i was you know i couldn't shovel i couldn't i couldn't do anything i felt like i was a, a prisoner in my own home you know um so <clears throat> 2015 came and we said well we we had bought an investment property in florida at that uh, at that time and it was rented out but um, we said, well, we're going to move to Florida because the weather, you know, I mean, I, I had to get out of that cold um, and I just couldn't function in the cold weather. So we, when we got here to uh, Florida, I found myself, you know, searching for doctors and everything else. I, I happened to run into this really, really great um, doctors and doc, Dr. Immune in Orlando, um, a big, big, tall Jamaican guy. Um, and he sat there and, and he has this really strong accent, but he says, hey, Ray, you know, I, I'm going to fix you up. You're going to be walking. You're not going to be in pain no more. You're going to be all set. And, you know, all these years that I was in pain and everything else, I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, uh, we'll try it, though, you know. But uh, sure enough, um, he did a procedure called the RFA, radio frequency abrasion. Um, and so for anybody who has disc problems or back pain or, you know, um, radio frequency abrasion saved my life. You know, this guy really saved my life. Um, there was no more pain. Um, so what they do is they go in, it's an outpatient surgery. They burn the nerves around the discs that you're having problems. Um, so it's a procedure I have to keep getting done over and over again. Um, but I can run down the street. I'm not in pain anymore. Um, the highest thing I take now is Tylenol or ibuprofen. Um, you know, it, it's like, I got my life back, you know? So, uh, 2015 ish, we opened our own brokerage here in Florida. We had to take our exams over again, but we knew nobody, you know, we, we had no sphere of influence. The phone wasn't ringing anymore. There was no housing magazines to be, uh, putting, uh, you know, free magazines to get ads. Um, so at that point in time, um, you know, real estate, the, the closings were non-existent, you know, um, and nothing was happening. We had a brokerage. I couldn't get any agents on board. I had no, no uh, sphere of influence. I had no customers. So I said, oh, what am I going to do? So yeah, you're, you're brand new to the area. You have, brand, yeah, you don't have a track record. They're like, well, why the hell am I going to join you? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know exactly how I found you, but now is a, a great time to plug uh, Joshua Smith's uh, Mastery Bootcamp. Um, absolutely life-changing for me. Um, the, the, the stuff you teach in there, the strategies you, you teach, um, the tactics uh, of knowing where your customers are coming from, keeping track of, uh, of all of your, um, you know, if you're gonna do ads in Facebook, you know, which groups are you getting those leads from? You know, tracking was, was uh, big for me. Um, because I never tracked anything, right? I never tracked nothing until I went through your course. So tracking was huge for me. Um, but the biggest thing, I think I have it right over here. Um, the biggest thing was this here lifetime study. You probably can't read it, but um, I, I have this stuck to my wall just so I can remember. Um, and basically what it does is it tells you how many months you have left on this earth, on this planet. And, you know, um, that was a big realization for me at that point. Um, I can remember the day that, you know, I was watching you do this, um, 
on my old old Apple computer that was barely running, um, and you know that that just really really uh, resonated with me. You know, I, I don't have too much time left on this earth, <laughs> so I, I better you know get off the pot, you know, and um, and, and start doing something. Um, so at that point, you know, I'm loaded up with with Joshua Smith's strategies. The open mega open house strategy. Absolutely love the mega open house strategy. So if you're listening to this, I highly, highly, highly recommend you going to Joshua Smith's boot camp. Take the boot camp. It's going to change your life. There's so many life changing things that you you teach in there. Um, you know, I can't I can't tell you how how much it's helped uh, uh, my my whole career. Everything really. Uh, I don't think I'd be where I am today if I didn't find you and take that course. Um, so big plug for Joshua. Um, yeah, appreciate, appreciate that, man. It's a lot. <laughs> but you know, that life study and, and stuff. So I started studying everything, um, that I can. I'm like, well, um, you know, I have to figure out how to get that steady flow of leads. I need to get off that roller coaster, that real estate roller coaster. That I think most agents are on, um, you know, that they, they don't know if they're going to pay their, their dues this year or, <laughs> Or, or, or just close up shop, you know, it, it's um, kind of crazy how many realtors I talk to that are in that position. They don't know um, where their next customer's coming from. They don't know if they're going to have a closing. They don't know. I mean, dues are coming up. I just got an email the other day for real estate dues, um, you know, bam, by the end of the month here. <laughs> So um, I think there's a discount or something, but I'm going to end up um, taking that discount, you know, because I like paying things a little early and saving that money. But uh, anyway, so if you didn't have the money or you didn't have the closings, you're, you're nervous, you know, you're stressed out, you know, and, and I don't know how many listeners know, know that feeling of being stressed out, not knowing where your closings are coming from, you know. Um, so I, I studied everything. I, I took your mega open house strategy um, and. I just put it on steroids. I started calling every agent that, um, that I found my my office. Like you say, you got to find the, the the right offices so you can sit there and open up your, your your office for business at the open houses. So I went and I invested in um, a whole crap load of open house signs, uh, flags, um, banners, uh, tripods. I mean, I I went to town with it. Um, I, and I was having great success, um, with that. We were meeting a lot of new people now business. So what I would do is I would go uh, take these courses and I'd put my earplugs in and I'd listen to the book. Cause you know, a lot of open houses, you have a lot of time on your hands. Um, so I would train while I was waiting for customers to come in. I would do open houses, um, you know, during the week, even Wednesdays was my favorite day. Um, to do weekly open houses. Uh, and then every weekend I would have a Saturday and Sunday um, office. Every single one would be different, um, you know, and, and but I, the most visible ones that I could find closest to the main drags, like everything like you teach, you know. Um, so that was really working. Things were great. You know, I had a new lease on life. I was loaded up uh, with Bear with the strategies. We had started to have steady closings. Um, you know, I was still making my phone calls at that time, uh, expired. I started really getting into, um, uh, cold calling and, and learning, uh, cold calling strategies. Um, things are great, you know, um, and then COVID, um, you know, it, it was like back on that roller coaster, you know, um, I have a garage full of open house signs I can't use now. Um, nobody wanted to have an open house. Uh, all the agents were telling me, no, 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 they don't, the, the sellers don't want to have an open house. Um, so I was like, my, that was my favorite strategy, the open house strategy, you know, it was now business. It was like, you know, customers just talking to you, you know, just, uh, it, it was easy. It was great. You know, it did take a lot of work. Um, but, uh, you know, you had to be out there and take up all your weekends, um, and so I had to do something. So as I was studying all this marketing, um, I, as I was studying Facebook ads, um, you started getting me into Facebook ads, teach me a little bit. Then I started buying other courses on how to do Facebook ads. And I really got deep into Facebook. Um, and then, um, I'm like, well, how many of you heard, you know, uh, the fortunes in the follow-up, right? 
um, because it doesn't matter how many leads you get. Um, it, it doesn't matter how many Facebook leads or where they're coming from. If you don't follow up with them, uh, you know, I think you said what eight touches, you have to touch somebody eight times before they even know your name, you know, before they even know you exist. So, um, you know, Facebook ads were great, but all those leads were, you know, three to six months out. Um, and I had no follow up process. I had no way of keeping track of every single one of them and following up and calling them. Um, I, I had no time to do that. And I had no you know, money to hire somebody else to make sure they follow up. So um, I, you know, got into software and, you know, finding a, um, a solution for that follow up, you know, I mean, Perfect Storm, um, that's another uh, fantastic thing that was, uh, you know, we joined Perfect Storm right away um, for our front end uh, websites and for our um, marketing links and stuff going back. Um, it, it was a it's a phenomenal CRM and, and um, it has everything loaded for you, you know? So that was really, really great, but um, I had no visibility, you know? So um, you have to be where people want you to be, where, where, where you're visible, you know, if you're not visible. So I Googled myself and I said, well, all right, let's see where I am. And I wasn't on the first page, the second page, the third page. I, I don't even think I existed on any page um, at that point. Um, I had no Google reviews. Um, I, I was just a, a, a nobody just <laughs> in, in the internet uh, world, you know. And so I Googled realtors near me and I started seeing, you know, who was visible, who was showing up, you know, um, and how did they get there, right? Because those there was a lot of maps uh, in the early days of Google. It was uh, you, you had to put your business on a map, right? Uh, if you didn't, you know, fill out your postcard and have Google mail you the postcard and register your business, um, you know, that was Google maps. And then they came out with Google, my business um, shortly after. So I started studying everything about branding and uh, Google and how to get, you know, Google reviews how to automate that process. And, you know, um, that I started writing a book on it because I, I just started doing all of this stuff. And then I, you know, I learned about the, the YNEX, it's called Next program where you have uh, listings. It was the yellow pages at that time, right? Um, so I joined the Next program, you know, it was costing me a fortune for it, but I had listings everywhere, you know? Um, so I knew when I, when COVID came, I said, all right, well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing advertising, you know, cause that's where it seemed everybody was doing it. Zillow was calling me up as, offering me, all right, so $3,000 a month. We'll give you seven leads. Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Anyways, you know, I mean, $3,000 a month, but in, in my area, people are actually paying Google like 15, $20,000 a month. And, you know, for leads in this area, those are the, the, the ones that are getting all of the leads, you know, and of course, at that time, they were shared leads, too. So it wasn't like you were getting anything special, you know, um, <laughs> you were just getting an internet lead, uh, whether they were interested or not, you, you had to close them, you had to talk to them, and, and, and they were still three to six months out, um, if you had a good one. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, I started studying on software and how I can make the follow-up process, how I can automate my Google reviews, um, how I could um, get uh, posting on Facebook. And you know, if you wanted to build your brand right on Facebook, there's different strategies on different social media platforms, but um, you know, you had to post every every day on on Facebook to keep yourself relevant. You know. Um, so I started looking into different softwares for that. And all of those were outrageously expensive um, for posting software. So you like, I'm not doing it every day. You know, I, I want to schedule it so I can just sit down, do, do, do a couple hours. Okay. I'm done with Facebook. You know um, the strategy on, on posting in groups that I still do manually. Um, I still go, I, I, I do that. That works really well for free organic leads, but I want it to be visible. Yeah. And, you know, um, I wanted to be on Google. So how do I get Google reviews, you know? Um, so 
I wrote a book on, on, on Google My Business and how to get more reviews, how to automate that process. And when I built the software, I made sure that that was part, that was one of the main purposes uh, is to, to build a brand. Now I built it just strictly for me, it's selfish reasons. Um, and it, I wanted to build, uh, I wanted to get off that roller coaster. I wanted to build a, a brand where I was recognized. And if you punched in my name or punched in realtor, I wanted to be found. If, if, you know, somebody asked Siri or Alexa or, you know, any one of the other ones, I wanted to be able to be seen there, you know, uh, realtors near me. Okay. Well, I wanted to be, I, I wanted to be there, you know? Um, and the way to do that is to get, um, as many Google reviews as you can. And, you know, a lot of people are not into Google reviews, but that's where all the, everybody, if you want something today, uh, even if it's a product or whatever it is, everybody Googles it, what, what, the reviews, you know, let's go by the reviews. How many people uh, said it was a good product, you know? Um, how many people say this person's a, a great business person um, out there? So, uh, you know, that really, really matters. Um, Yep. No, I love it, man. And, and, and we'll get kind of, I want to get deeper into, you know, your strategies, uh, you know, with these things, but before, before I do that, man, I, I gotta, you know, as you're going through your journey, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's filled with ups and downs, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and ups and downs from, you know, business and, and business being disrupted through, you know, great financial crisis through COVID through, you know, um, but so you got business disruptions, you know, mm -hmm. um, you had finance, you know, business disruptions, I guess might, those might lead to financial, you know, disruptions too. Um, but then you also had, you know, personal pain and, and, you know, physical limitations and, you know, things that, you know, you were going through through there. And, you know, I mean, so many people, especially today, just, just want the easy road. Like, oh, I just want to be happy. I just want things to go, you know, smooth. They, they, they just run from pain, you know, but I've yet to meet anybody that's created right. any, any level of success that hasn't been through insane shit storms. And, and mm -hmm. it's not like, a, you know, are you going to get punched in the face and knocked down? It's just a matter of when is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and are you committed to pushing through either way? You know, and I know that you shared those pains, you know, that those painful moments that you went through. But my, my question is, what kept you through each of those different instances pushing through where most people, I mean, most people fail once or twice to throw in the hat, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, but you, you didn't man, like, you know, and, and you had, you know, it was filled with, you know, just highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows, you know, which, you know, it, 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 that's not, you had your own distinct pains that you were going through, but the commonality, you know, it's like my, my business in a way, there've been different highs and lows in yours, but it's been the same thing when outsiders look in, or, you know, mm -hmm. the outsiders are looking at you. They think, oh, man, you created all this success. You've had this big, successful career. I'm like, dude, if you only knew. <laughs> you know, right? yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah I've, I've, had, I've had more years where I've got my ass handed to me than I've had succeeded. Everybody just sees the success and they don't see that, you know, when you get your ass beat. So, like, what mm -hmm. kept you pushing through? What kept you, you know, because it was like just adaption after adaption, man. I mean, moving, you know, moving your business a thousand miles south, you know, like all these yeah. different what, what, what kept you not giving up, not going back, going to something different? Cause that well, was always you know, a viable option. In a way, um, I guess, you know, my back, um, was a, one of the main reasons, um, you know, I, I couldn't lift those two by fours anymore. I couldn't do the physical you know, stuff anymore. So I had to find a career, um, at that point in time that really, you know, wasn't, uh, strenuous or physical, you know, um, to the point where I couldn't do it, you know? Um, so that was one reason why I kind of stayed in real estate. Um, but I, like I said, I was kind of born into it. So I was like uh, always in real estate. There was always thinking about it. I watched, you know, um, uh, all these people make a lot of money um, in real estate uh, in good times and bad times. Um, I met a lot of really great people. Um, there was a lot of freedom uh, in real estate as far as, you know, my children are concerned. Uh, I had some young kids at that point in time that weren't in school yet. Um, so it, it was really good not to have to um, put them in daycare or pay for daycare. Or, you know, I, I was able to actually raise my children. 
Um, so that was one of my biggest whys. And same with my wife too, is, you know, we wanted to, to be there for our kids. We didn't want to just hand them off uh, to these indoctrination camps and, 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 you know, um, <laughs> let somebody else raise them, you know? Um, so that was one of our biggest whys is, you know, we, we did it for our kids. Um, that was, and also that's what I had learned, you know, um, that that's what my whole career, besides carpentry and building houses and stuff, you know, um, I studied real estate. I was really intrigued in real estate. I really enjoy real estate. It's a passion. You know, a lot of people, you know, think about it as a job. Um, but I think about it as a lifestyle, you know, um, it, it's just what I do. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy that, that, you know, when a customer gets into a house and they walk into that house for the first time and it's theirs, the smile that comes on their face, the gratitude that they have, um, for the realtor for making it happen. You know, um, there was a lot of different transactions I had in my time where, you know, the transactions were, almost ready to not happen, you know, and um, we made it happen. We, you know, we called the right people. We did what we had to do to make that transaction happy. And, and just the gratitude uh, that you feel, you know, almost like when you're building a house, right. Or, or you build something um, after you're done with it, you stand back and you look and you say, okay, wow, I built that. I did that. You know, it, it gives you a feeling of pride and success and, um, it, it just, I really enjoyed that feeling. Um, so I got that feeling out of helping people, um, you know, cause there, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, running up to 2008, right. There, there, I could get a loan for anybody at that time. Um, I had a lot of uh, connections with a lot of different bankers, um, and they, I was getting people loans that that were on social security and you know um didn't have an income um and um people at mcdonald's um as long as they had an income you know i, I mean they, they gave anybody a loan at that point in time so um but those people were really really super grateful that they got into a house i remember uh one um customer her name is carmen and she really put an impression on me well she called me a million times too but um, you know, she was living in an apartment and, um, it, it wasn't a great apartment. It was in a bad area and she was struggling and, you know, she called me up that day and I just had, the, you know, a conversation with a loan officer and uh, he told me about a program and she says, look, my dream is to own a duplex, you know, so I can rent it out on one side and have some income coming in. And, um, so we were able to get her that dream, you know, and when she moved in, she was so grateful that, you know, she, I was like in every sentence of everybody she ever talked to for, for the next five years, you know? Um, so there's nothing like being able to help somebody and then have that person like spread the word about you. And, you know, I just really enjoy that. I didn't really like losing that when I moved to Florida, but, you know, I knew how I did it the first time. It was hard work, persistence, um, you know, and, and you just had to keep doing it. And I think a lot of the reason why I focus so much and why I learn so much and, and it, it keeps my mind busy um, because, you know, I do have um, still issues with my back. And I, I so if I'm able to just sit around and think about it, you know, I, it's, it's not a good scenario, you know, you just, oh, and that's how I think people fall into a depression and stuff. Yeah. So I always, I have to keep myself busy. I have to keep my mind busy. Um, and yeah, well, so that's what's, what's really kind of yeah. made me stay in the field because I, I really love it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, powerful stuff, man. Yeah, what, what's the saying out there? Idleness is the devil's playground. <laughs> I, 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 that's where I get myself in trouble too, man. When I got too much time to think, you know, um, uh, not that thinking isn't important, obviously it is, but um, yeah, I, I got to keep myself busy because when I'm not, man, I, I uh, it's, it's when I'm most miserable. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, man, I, you know, I mean, if I were to sum that up, I know you gave, you know, a lot of specific reasons and, and you know, whys to that, but you know, if I were to sum it up, it, it, just from an outsider looking, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but looking at all of that, it was like, look, you, you knew that real estate was the vehicle 
you were going to succeed no matter what, no matter what temporary defeats that you were experiencing, like you burned all the other ships. It was like, Hey, you know, for, yeah. you know, all these different, you know, reasons as you had your reasons as to why real estate was a vehicle. But then from there, it wasn't like, like this was the plan. There was no other plan B that you could, you know, like we were going to make this thing happen no matter what resistance no matter what. we experience, like we were just going to push through. And I think that that's so important because so many people just start looking at alternatives. So I can always fall back on my old career. You know, yeah. well, dude, like if you have that mentality, you're always, you're, ne you're never going to give that full input into this thing. You you're know? not going to um, give a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and yep. that's, I think that's where a lot of agents, you know, new agents coming on is they still have a, a full-time job and they're trying to get this done part-time and they don't actually think of it as their full-time job, as their career, as, as their, you know, this is what's going to pay the bills, you know, and, and they don't take it seriously enough to, to get into a full-time career. A lot of the new agents um, are like that. You know, they want, they want to, they see the success, they want to make the money, but they don't have the time or the knowledge yet to, to put into it, to make stuff happen, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was one thing that I wanted to do too, is I wanted to help, you know, um, struggling agents like I, I, the agents that are on the roller coaster, you know, that are, don't know, how to get everything going. I, I just enjoy teaching and, and, and coaching um, people to get success. And, you know, that's kind of where the software came in is, you know, I wanted to build something that was going to give me um, brand visibility. I, I wanted to build something that's going to bring me uh, um, leads on automated, you know, uh, automation. Um, you know, I really started getting in pretty heavy with um, uh, Home Partners of America um, the, this past year. And, you know, I mean, that is a great program um, as well. You know, I, I was able to create an automation and a whole funnel for it. So now I was bringing in customers and I had a nurture uh, for them. And so when they were ready, they raised their hand and I knew it. And I was able to close 10 deals in the last few months, um, just home partner deals. Um, Oh, and then I said, all right, well, you know, I had some other agents coming on board and I, I said, all right, well, why don't you give it a shot, you know? And, and so they tried it and now they're having success. You know, one of my agents, Darlene, she just closed three deals last month, last month, you know, um, and she was working a full-time job and uh, she's no longer working her full-time job anymore. She's really trying to make a go of real estate. Of course, now we're starting to get into the decline of real estate, you know, um, but like you said in your course, you know, a real estate, there's always a closing. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a good market, sideways market, bad market. It, you just have to put yourself in between the people who are buying and selling yep. and, and make it a thing, you know. So, um, I, you know, I listen to you say all the time, you just got to find those people um, that are buying and selling. Well, who, who? you know, where are they? What are they doing? You know? Um, and it, it's so true today that you just have to sit back, kind of sit back and say, okay, well, where can I find my next customer? Where, where you know, um, where are they coming from? And I built a, an automation for it. So I'm always building new things, always, you know, uh, new funnels, new, new automation, new Facebook ads um, to bring in different niches. So, I know you had said, um, you know, I, in your training courses about avatars, you know, um, and you have to really know who you're selling to, you know, who is that person that you want to wake up and, and, and help every day, you know? And um, so I think niching down and finding your avatar is super important in your real estate business because you can do everything mediocre, you know, but you can do one thing really, really good. And uh, so if you study and you, you know, you study who your avatar is and you do Facebook ads and you just really focus on that one niche and then you become known for that niche, then you start building yourself a brand in that niche. And then of course you're going to do everything else too. But, um, you know, I, I think that's super important for a lot of agents out there. They, they're, they're just all over the place. Yes, I'll take any lead. You know, they call me up, you know, uh, uh, I need this or that. And, you know, it, 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 you have to really focus on that niche, you know, um, because like I said, you can do everything okay. 
but you can do one thing really, really good. So if you focus on that one thing, you know, your business is going to be great. You're, you're, you're going to, and it's usually you like a few years ago, five years ago, that's who your, your avatar is usually, you know, um, th that's what I find a lot of people end up, well, you know, I was in this situation just a few years back and, you know, that's why I chose this avatar. Most of the times you relate better with the people who you the same age and, you know, the things that you have already gone through. So like when they're telling their story to you or why they're looking for a house or what they need, you relate better than, uh, you know, um, so like first time home buyers, they're not my niche, um, uh, my first niche anyway. I do help a lot of them. Um, I really enjoy first time home buyers, um, but there's a lot of education there um, and they don't really know what they want. They don't know the process yet. And, you know, so that is a really great niche for somebody just getting in the real estate market um, that, you know, it, knows how to to manage uh, first time home buyers and teach them you know what they actually do want to look at you got to go show them 30 houses and they don't want any of them they want the house they said they didn't want you know yeah. um yeah and I, I i couldn't agree more man i mean it, 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 we've all heard the saying that riches are in the niches um most people dismiss that unfortunately you know but it's like okay like you take you know the number one neurosurgeon or or or, or just a neurosurgeon in general you know, I don't know what the exact income differential is versus a generalized family practitioner, you know, but it's, you know, it, just for like an average, right? It's at least probably three or four X. But then mm -hmm. if you look at like the best neurosurgeon in the world or the, you know, top 5%, uh, you know, right? They're, they're, they're making millions, you know, versus mm -hmm. someone making a hundred grand. And, and, and I mean, specialization is so key. And, you know, unfortunately, it's never talked about her. It's very talked about very little in the real estate industry, but, you know, you and I are, students of marketing and, and outside of the real estate industry, you know, when you jump deep into the marketing world, it's like, the, it all begins with having a clear understanding of who your avatar or who your ideal client is, however you want to say that. Cause if you don't, man, you don't know what the messaging is, needs to be. Um, you don't know what the pain point, like what you're, what you're trying to solve for them. You don't know where your message needs to show up. You know, I love the, the saying by, by Perry Marshall of, you know, hey, if I'm selling Bibles, I'm probably not going to go to strip clubs to sell those Bibles because my <laughs> ideal client's probably not there. You know, but yeah. so many don't even yeah. think about that of like, do, 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 like, okay, should I be on TikTok? Well, I don't know. Are, are your ideal clients on TikTok? Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. It's going to differentiate. Okay. Are you working with a, you know, younger clientele? Like my ideal clients aren't on TikTok, you know, yeah. so I'm not going to focus on TikTok, you know, right? So um, not that it doesn't work. It works if your ideal client is there, but you got to make sure that you are showing up where your ideal client congregates, whether that be physically or visually, you know, online or offline. Um, but then, you know, and, and, you know, both you've been in the industry a little bit longer than I have, um, you know, but we've both been in this game for a long time. And it's like, I'm always saying is, is like the real estate is the one constant, like throughout my career, it's like, okay, well, here's the geographical locations that work. Here's the real estate within those geographical locations. Like that has always been trading hands. The yeah. one differentiator has been the ideal client that is buying the hand, you know, buying that real estate that's trading hands with it. As an example, you know, um, uh, 08 to, to 2012 or very prior to that, but the great financial crisis. I mean, you know, my business had a transition heavy from traditional, heavy from upsizers and, you know, traditional business into REO and short sales and, and a lot of investor clients, you know, right. Um, uh, in, in 2019, you know, 2019, 2020, 2021, you know, um, uh, one of our ideal clients, because we always have multiple, but um, uh, we still, you know, make sure that we're niching down with that. But one of our ideal clients was first time buyers, you know, but then all of a sudden you enter into 2019, 2020, 2021, same neighborhoods, same zip codes, same area, same real estate. Now, first time buyers are obsolete in my market. It's <laughs> upper middle class, it's affluent, it's institutional investors, even though it's the same real estate, same, same everything. You know, right? Mm -hmm. It's always adapting, shifting, and changing, and that's what you've been really good at. And anyway, it's been able to last and su succeed for this long. You know, understands that that is you know the thing that's always changing. You know, um, or can change. You know, um, yeah. um, some people might get. You know, not to say that you can't have the same ideal client throughout your career, um, um, you know, but it, it's you know who the market's good for is going to transition and shift. So, right. so what do you do? Um, uh, like, what do you do? Because like you just mentioned HPA. Well, the ideal client the HPA is for might be different than like, what, what do you do to go out there and find the, your ideal client for the current market that you're in? 
Sure. Well, you know, I, I kind of reverse engineer everything um, and I look at, okay, well, how many, you know, uh, we go back to, you know, your course where, all right, how many, how much money do I want to make? Um, and then, all right, well, how many customers, how many closings do I have to make um, to, to make that a kind of money? And then, you know, how much are the houses worth? How much commission am I going to make for those particular houses? And then who do I enjoy working with that, that is, you know, who are those people that are buying that house and who do I enjoy working with? Who do I relate the most with as far as, um, you know, who that particular house or that particular um, uh, number is, is going to work for, um, you know, because I could sit there and do, you know, a whole bunch of uh, $100,000. Well, I couldn't even find one here in Florida at 100000 today, but, um, you know, you could do a whole bunch of lower price houses and do a whole bunch of work, but a closing and a whole transaction is pretty much the same amount of work, no matter what price the house is. Um, so, what I do to try to find my customers is, well, I, the, you don't get leads from like just one source, right? There's many sources that you have to have to get leads trickling in and not just one source because that, that one source may dry up. But um, what I do do is, is I still, now that open houses are back open, um, I'm doing more open houses now with that house that's designed for that particular customer, yeah. um, for that particular market. So, um, like you said, there's always transactions happening, and you know, I found that that open house strategy. A lot of people don't like to do open houses, but man, you know, uh, it's not like I'm trying to sell that particular house that I'm doing the open house at. Uh, I'm just trying to meet new people that are in the process. Um, so I still fall back on that, um, uh, on that strategy. That one strategy is like changed everything for me, um, because you do go find your office. You do go find that particular house that, that you want your avatar to own. Right. So I, I do reverse engineer it and I look for houses that I can do an open house at that, um, that house is exactly who my avatar wants. So then I'm getting now business. And um, I also do a lot of Facebook ads um, and automation because when you do Facebook ads or any kind of online lean generation, it's always, you know, three to six months. You very rarely get somebody who has now business. So I say it's like a snowball, right? A snowball effect. So you make a snowball and you put it in the yard and you start rolling it and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, it just goes downhill and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So as you do your advertising and as you do your nurturing and your, your, your follow-up, your follow-up process means everything with all of these leads. So um, my, my lead generation is, like you said, the copy and everything is designed to reach that particular person that wants this particular house that costs this much money that I'm gonna sell X amount to reach that dollar amount. So I reverse that engineer everything and I nurture and I follow up. And I also, um, the big thing is getting reviews. So when you have a closing, you have to, if you can get a testimonial, a video testimonial, that's like the best because then you can use that everywhere. But if you can get them to just do a Google review, send them, automate the Google review process. So you're, you're building your brand and you're building your visibility online. So then when people are searching just online, they're going to find you. Um, there's Google, my business now has uh, Google service listing ads. Um, so where you're Google approved, there's a big check mark next to your name. If you Google, you know, realtors near me, you'll see a bunch of realtors come up and they're all, you know, check marks. Um, it is, you know, they, they, it is a little pricey, but it does work um, in, in this area. They, they immediately give you credibility because now you have a check mark. You've been verified, you know? Um, so just that little check mark in Google, it, it has a lot of uh, good things on the psyche. So you're not fighting that person. You don't really have to sell yourself as much. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, have all these years of experience. I can do this for you, that for you, this, and nobody likes to get into the sales mode. And, you know, I try to stay out of that as much as possible and just talk about scenarios and how it can help the other person. It's always about them instead of me. 
Um, I, I, I've made that shift a long time in my listing presentations too, is, you know, I walk through the house and, you know, I'll talk to them and I'll find something that I uh, relate with on the walls or wherever, you know, um, something that I can talk to them about so they can feel comfortable with me. Um, and then it's always about them. How can we solve their problem? And then, you know, I'll give them the solutions once I figure out what their problem is. And that way I'm not selling, like a lot of new realtors go in and they, you know, say, oh, I've been doing this and I sold this many houses and, you know, and, and it's always about them. And um, it should never be about the realtor. It should always be about the customer, you know, um, it, it should always be about their story. So anyway, I digress, but um, yeah, I do a lot of um, lead generation online uh, through Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google, um, and then I get the reviews, but I do, I, I really lean on your open house strategy because I take everybody and I throw them into my CRM. And if they aren't ready, at least they're getting emails, they're getting follow-up, they're getting text messages, you know, so you're always top of mind in, in their world, you know, and it doesn't always have to be, you know, um, you promoting yourself. It, it's, talk about them, you know, how can I help you? What is your story? And then maybe send them, um, you know, uh, some marketing, put them on a, on a drip, a property list of exactly that property that they're looking for. Even if they're not ready right now, I right. always set them up on that list and, and send them properties because that's what's going to trigger it. Someday they're going to be, oh my God, this is it. You know, this is the house that I want. And you want to be, you want to be visible. You want to be the one present when it comes time for ready for them to, to buy. So, um, you know, as far as leads and what I do is, is, is a little bit of everything, you know, yeah. um, you, you know, I still do postcards. I mail out letters. I still call expireds. Um, I don't do the for sale by owners too much anymore. I should. Um, but I, I found out I have to sell myself too much with them. And it's, it, it's not as easy. I still can do it. I, I still talk to them, but I like to to call the other realtors that don't want to do open houses on their houses and just, you know, find my office, find that right property. And that brings in a lot of customers, even if they're not ready. I got them on a drip now, you know, I got them on that, that follow-up process. Uh, so I have a lot of different follow-up processes um, for everybody, every different scenario, um, you know, and, and you can talk generally about stuff, but I'm also creating a, a newsletter. Um, it's going to be a, a monthly newsletter. I might even do a weekly newsletter. Um, so it'll have, you know, all the stats for today's real estate and, you know, everything that every, the customers want to know, even if they're not selling, you know, um, we were sitting in, in the house, the mail lady came and we grabbed the mail one day and um, my wife had it. She, she opened up and she's looking at it. And, and the realtor had sent a postcard with all the stats of all the sales in the neighborhood. And, you know, I mean, this was a long time ago, but um, she's like, wow, you know, I, that really made me enter. I actually stopped and read that postcard yeah. versus somebody who says, hey, I just sold a house down the street. Give me a call. R right. You know, or those always end up in the trash barrel if people even read it. But you know, just giving people what they want, right, is, is, is a big thing. You really can't get into too many sales, you know, too many sales scripts and stuff like that. They just, they don't work because people are human and people like that human emotion um, and that nobody likes to be sold, you know, right. but, yep. but they love to spend money. <laughs> yep, yep. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I always say the same thing. People love to buy, people love to sell, people love to consume, but they hate being sold. And 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 the quickest way to just understand that is just how, just observe your own self and your own consumption behavior. You know, yeah. like you go, you go walk into Macy's, person comes up to you, hey, can I help you? No, I'm just looking. No, you're not I'm just looking. Like you drove there for, you know, but, but it's like, <laughs> You want to go do your own due diligence. And then when you need assistance, like you'll let them know. And then you raise your oh, hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, one thing I think that's, I just want to highlight because I hope everybody that's watching and listening has picked up on this. So, you know, you talked about, okay, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm doing Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing open house. I'm doing all these different things. However, with each of those different things, and this is where I see so many go wrong is they just focus on the tactic, just the, the method itself, you know, um, but within each of those tactics, 
you know, you're developing your strategy to speak specifically to that ideal client, you know, so you're not just doing Facebook ads, you're doing Facebook ads that speak very specifically to the ideal client that you're trying to target within Facebook. Um, and then once they opt in, even your lead follow-up strategies, you know, are, again, are speaking to that specific person. Cause you know, I mean, each, each lead, you know, lead methodology, if you will, or lead generation, you know, a tactic that you're going after, you know, um, can be for a different ideal client, you know, but I, I just wanted to highlight that because I think, you know, because I get, I hear all the time, I'll do open house, don't work, Facebook ads, so, you know, oh, they, I tried it, they don't work for me. I'm like, well, all you're saying is you, you, you have a shitty strategy. You're like, mm -hmm. you're, you're blaming, you're, you know, it, it's, it's just like saying, oh, I sent out, I sent out postcards, they didn't work for me. Right. Well, postcard like that, that's just the mailbox. The mailbox is no different than Facebook. It's no different than, you know, it, it's just a, a, a place where eyeballs can see what, you know, what was your mailing frequency? Yeah. You know, what were your USPs? What were your different call to actions? What was, you know, like what, you know, people don't go deep enough into those things. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm really curious, you know, because Google, my business, dude, is. You know, I mean, it's powerful, man, and it's expanding and Google's investing so much time, energy and money into this. And, and you know, for years it was like, OK, you wanted to be rated on, on Zillow, you know, because that's mm -hmm. where, you know, the eyeballs were at. But now with Zillow, you know, essentially becoming their own brokerage, um, most markets, not all, but most um, have already converted to this. You know, my market being one of those and I believe your market as well. But, you know, where, where you can't buy leads anymore from them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, where it's you know, like you're 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 not an agent at their brokerage, but like it's all referral. Like in my market, it's either thirty or thirty five percent referral fee. They've really minimized it down to the amount of agents that they work with. You know, mm -hmm. um, just making sure they're working with the right agents, and and it becomes an impossibility to get in there. You know, well, I had a dude I was talking to who was I, I don't know if he was the highest, but one of the highest rated um, agents on on Google. Man, like like over two thousand reviews, um, and they all disappeared overnight. You know, so so it's like, okay, there, there's a vulnerable element there. Now, maybe that was just shit, like a, a glitch that happened in the code, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you and I are both in software. We know how that stuff can happen, you know, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe it was an accident, but they just couldn't get those back. May, maybe that was the case. I don't know if that was the case, you know, because it was, I mean, his area, it, it switched to, you know, Zillow Flex. He wasn't mm -hmm. in with them. He wasn't, a, you know, like he was just leveraging Zillow for the reviews and they just, you know, it could just be coincidence, but you know, sometimes coincidences are, there's, there's reasons, <laughs> you know, um, but anyway, you know, I'm a big believer in owning those, man, being in control mm -hmm. of those. And, and I had a conversation with him before. The reason why I know this is because he reached out to me. We had a conversation before and I'm like, Hey dude, like that's putting you in a very vulnerable position. I hope that you're at least screenshotting those. So then you can own them on your website, upload them in your Facebook business page, have them elsewhere, you know, um, um, you know, just from that. But anyway, with that being said, it's, you know, um, uh, Google has really taken over and, and, and become the dominant source for Google reviews. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, you know, like, like, dude, I mean, I'm seeing new agents on my team that, you know, within the first few months of being an agent, you know, they're able to go out there and, and, and really dominate that space and getting a lot of business off of it, um, you know, because it, it's not like Zillow where it has to be a verified source. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe you have somebody that reaches out and they want a CMA. And you, you know, you deliver that CMA, you know, and they're really happy with it and you jump on a video call and, and maybe they discover right now isn't the time to sell for whatever reason, but maybe, maybe it's not time to sell. And, you know, and that's okay. Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, like I'm going to help people whether they want to, you know, like, and, and if I don't believe it's time to sell, I'm going to tell them it's not time to, you know, whatever it may be, but, but they really enjoyed the experience. Well, they, they can go out there and review, you, you know, it doesn't have to be, it can just be any experience that they have with you through, through your real estate career, you know, if you will. Um, so there's ways to go out there and leverage this and build it, but there is, you know, I, I find a lot of people struggling with it as well of, of, you know, set up, um, um, best ways to get these reviews. Once you have them, best ways to promote it, kind of leverage it. You know, and I know that, and we'll we'll talk about the book too. And and I don't know if you know when it's going to be available, but hopefully we can you know have some information where people know where to go find that because he you know recently wrote a book on this as well. Um, but from the guy that wrote the book, I can't pick, <laughs> not pick your brain, <laughs> you know, on this. So you know, um, like if somebody's never done Google reviews, brand new. Yeah. Where do they start? Where do they start? Well. Uh, go opening a free Google My Business page. So you just have to have a Google email address, and then um, you can just type in Google Google My Business, and you can create a free Google My Business page. Right, there. that's really the the first place to start. 
But, you know, there's a lot of things that, you, you know, I started doing this too, because not all reviews are going to be good reviews. And once a review gets on Google, you can't get it on yeah. Google. You know, it, it stays on Google. So I started doing an automation because I have workflows that I can create automations for, send emails and do uh, all kinds of different things with workflows. So I created a workflow that before I send out a, uh, a request to somebody to, to Google, uh, to give me a review, I send them a survey so I can create surveys on my site. And I, I created a survey and I just basically asked them, say, okay, how was your service? Are you happy with the service? You know, what are you, what did you like? What didn't you like? And I, and I get them to fill out the survey first. And then if I get a bad customer or a bad survey come in and say, no, I wouldn't recommend you or, you know, I just won't send them a Google review, you know. Um, so I, I get a chance to get the survey in. I ask them the questions and I'm, I'm also reaching for more information um, on my past customer, too, because you don't always know everything about them. So in this survey, I can ask them a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of birth dates, you know, so I actually I include the birth date in there and, and just so I can send you a, a card, you know, I, I, I use the survey as a way to get more information. So on their birthday, I can send them a, a birthday card, you know, um, and a handwritten birthday card goes a long way for past uh, past customers. Because then you're you're top of mind again. If they're oh wow look my realtor sent me a birthday card you know so now if they're talking with somebody else you're going to get a referral you know um, but get started on Google My Business first. You open yourself a Google My Business page and then there's a whole knowledge panel uh, like so in my book I go all, over all of the knowledge panels how to set it up uh, what what are the good policies. Don't make your your Google My Business page look or have spammy uh, text in your Google My Business page because uh, Google will actually not show your 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 page because you look too spammy. There's a new thing that Google just came up with. Uh, I forget what the name of it is, but they're really going heavy on spam. And um, so you want to make sure that you know your Google My Business page doesn't have uh, spammy links or, you know, spammy pictures in it that you're trying to sell stuff. They just want you to have reviews and, uh, the more reviews, the more you're, they're going to show your, your, um, Google, my business page, but also photos of houses, photos of, of the area, photos of different businesses, photos of yourself, you know, um, those are all great photos to be in there. But don't take a photo of a, um, you know, your USP and and put it yeah. on, you know, because that's not the place to advertise. It's a place to get you visible, but it's not the place to advertise. So if Google thinks you're spamming just by putting all this information in there, they're not going to show your page. Um, so there's a lot of different things like that that I go over with um, with yeah, how, what the, what are the best practices so you can get the best you know, results, get closest to the first page on Google, you know, get found. Um, and, and, you know, that knowledge panel, the pictures, posting daily. Um, I mean, you don't have to post daily, but um, it's always good to post a new picture, post a new story um, on your, on your Google My Business page. And not only because people read that stuff when they look you up or they, you show up, they can see all the stories of all the people that you helped and stuff. And um, so it's really good. And then I go over reviews. So my system has uh, uh, the ability to be able to comment on your review. Uh, so if you get a review, you can go back and thank them, or you can go back and add to the story that they just said, you know, uh, whatever the situation was, you can add in some, you know, give the, give the viewer uh, a synopsis of, of what they just did. So like a home partner's um, person, you know, their story of how they, you know, found the house and how the whole process was easy. And then, you know, we finally get them into their dream home and stuff like that. So stories sell, you know, everybody loves reading a good story. So put stories in your, in your business page, and that's going to bring you natural organic leads coming in. I have, you know, tracking um, in it. So I get to track how many people 
come to my business page and how many people leave my business page. And every day now that I, uh, I've, cre- I've got to uh, connect with the next people. And so I get a huge discount that I can offer everybody on, on the next program to get um, uh, your business, like on all of those Bing and YouTube and Yahoo. Yeah, and ne- next like scours almost all of the internet. Uh, that's you know, right. to make sure it's all congruent for you. Yeah. Yep. So, and, and you, you know, another thing too, is you don't want to have too many businesses in one address. So a lot of these people like, like myself, um, I use a virtual office. And um, so there's many people, many different businesses that have that same address um, in there. So Google doesn't like that to see so many people with the same address. So they go with the person that's been there the longest, the one that has the most, you know, uh, reviews and the one who has, and then they shut everybody else off. So if you have an office with multiple businesses in there, you know, I mean, I guess if you have your unit number, that's different um, because you have, you have something that separates you, but if you're all just using the same address for, you know, um, Google, doesn't like that so which makes it challenge for us in real estate because typically we have our brokerage address you know if you if you're with a company has bricks and mortar you know right like mine Mm -hmm. like okay i've got my office location well then i might have 50 agents you know on my team inside that office location well if they all try to sign up with an account using that same office location it's gonna be so then then i believe i heard this um that they allow it where you don't have to have an address you can choose a service area is that not true well no because they they, in order to get a google my business page you they actually send you a postcard to your address to verify that it it's an address um and that's how they verify they, they they know you're real you know so i've had to mail out postcards to my address several times because i do have other people in that office um and i wasn't showing up um in there so i actually had to get a different address um to mail a postcard to and uh, i'm using utilizing that address because i just couldn't get around that you know, but is that, is that address that you use to get the postcard does that have to be visually displayed on your Google My Business page. Like is an example, like, I don't know, like there's a lot of EXP agents, you know, right? That might, their business address might be their home address, but maybe they don't want their home address shown. They just want to have Google My Business show the service areas. If they do it that way, is their home address? Because maybe they don't want that out there. Their home address is going to be visible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it will be visible. Especially if you want to use the Google Verified uh, services, you might be able to on maps, like take away your address and just have a map listing. But um, if you want to have a Google, a verified Google My Business page, you have to be verified everything. They're going to verify your your licenses. They're going to verify um, your address, your phone number, um, that you're in business. So it takes a little while to actually get a verified Google My Business page where you can get that check mark that says you've been verified. And then you're, you can't use service ads until you are verified. So until the Google is able to check everything, make sure you are a licensed um, agent or broker, um, you won't have a Google My Business page. So um, it's super important to do a lot of the different um, tactics on your knowledge panel, like to make sure everything is, is congruent with everything else that you have out there. Um, because if you have different listings, different addresses, different phone numbers, and it's the same business, Google sees all of that, you know, so the best you can, you want to have like the same phone numbers, the same addresses, the same, you know, throughout the different platforms, because there are other like, other platforms that it sees. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're looking the same on, on, if possible, the same on every platform. Yep. So then like for me, Okay, I've got I've got one building, mm-hmm. which is you know kind of like GSD Mode Studios, which is the hub. But then out of there, I, you know, I operate six different businesses. You right. know, um, so I'd almost need to go to the post office, and I'm gonna get their building, so I could set up like you know suite number, not suite, you know, but like like an executive you know office right. building. Number. Yeah. More than it's like you know this, but this is like a this one's B, this one's you know, so it, you know, right. taking that complex, you know, 
in order to file in order because if i have six businesses that are all showing the same identical address i'm probably gonna get flagged one two three main street unit a you know one two three main street unit b you know um and and then just just so you can have the mail is still going to come to you i'm sure the mailman will find you if you you know but you're only having it's not like people are going to mail you stuff from that address from your google my business page you know unless they're looking you up and had to send you something but Typically, well, I was just more curious if, if they would approve it and then if it would be suppressed or not. They will approve it. Um, it may be suppressed. Um, okay. We would have to try it in different locations to see which, you know, if it was suppressing. And, and you have to have other people look at on, on their computers because, you know, um, you want to have different people check and see if they can see you, um, see if it pops up. And reviews are super important, too, because um, it, the ones that have mega reviews they usually end up on first uh, first on google because they know that you have more reviews you have more customers you have more visibility um the ones with three or four you'll probably end up on you know the fifth or sixth page um but you will move closer like I, when i first googled myself i had no reviews i had no google my business page and i showed up nowhere you know yep. um so you do want to you know make sure that you have that knowledge page filled out with all your your the correct stuff um like so my system gives you a phone number um and it's connected with the with the next program and the google my business program so um like i have my system phone number where it, it's it comes to my cell phone but um i advertise that particular phone number on google because if somebody calls me at two o'clock in the morning i'm not necessarily going to be picking it up in the system will actually get it and then be able to text them a, a missed call text back to say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed you. How can I help you? You know, that that's huge being able to get back with people so you don't miss calls. Um, but just having that phone number there for, for, you know, all my social media out there. So if somebody wants to reach me, they can call that number. And then uh, they become an instant lead in my system by calling my phone number. Um, and then I can text them or I can message them or I can email them or, you know, it's all a, it's, it's a all in one platform. So, um, you know, I have everything from my social media um, to my Google, my business page, to all my Facebook ads, um, everything comes to this one platform and I can do everything from my cell phone. And, um, you know, so if I'm out, I can still text leads, I can still email or I can still call from the platform. And it looks like I'm calling from my phone number um, that, you know, the system phone number. Um, so I can actually have a little bit of privacy between, you know, um, nobody's calling my cell phone personally, unless I want to give them my cell phone number, um, you know, and that way I can follow up too with everybody easier than, oh, I missed a call on my cell phone. Now I have to take their information and I have to put it into my CRM and I have to set it up. This just automates it. So if I miss a call, it's already in the system you know, um, and then I just, I can, whatever that call might have been, I can set up an automation for it, I can call them back, or I, you know, whatever it takes, but, um, but reviews are super important, you know, being able to send out an automated link to all of your customers, super important, um, number of re reviews you get, super important, um, the address, uh, mailing the postcard back, um, it, is, it, ha it all has to look the same, you know, now you can have different. So if you, in your business, you created one for the GSD podcast, and then you created one for your real estate, and then you recreated one. If you have the same addresses, they're not all going to show up. You're, if you did Joshua Smith at that address, and then had in the, in your knowledge panel, all the different businesses in there, then it was just one number to get a hold of you, one address to get a hold of you, and then you can separate it all on your posts, you know. But if you had separate businesses, separate corporations, or whatever, and you wanted to have its own address um, and its own its own Google My Business page to be able to um, do it, then you're going to want to definitely do the units um, and have different units in your building. Yeah. And I was just using me in this example because that's almost like the brokerage example that, you know, um, like that my office, you know, again, we have, you know, 50 some agents or, or more in that location, you know, but it's one office location, you know, so 
almost having to like create mailbox. I mean, and I guess they could always use a personal address, but some people don't want that out there, you mm -hmm. know? Um, mm -hmm. So, um, so then from there, it, it, as far as, you know, okay, gain, you know, okay, we're getting a bunch of reviews. Obviously that's going to help you when people are Googling your name or mm -hmm. like you said, you know, realtors, you know, realtors, top realtors, in, realtors in, you know, if, Phoenix, if you get verified, you'll show up in that top line above everybody else that you don't even have to advertise. Yeah. Then from there though, um, you know, cause that's, I don't want to say, I mean, that's playing offense to play defense, you know, right. Like, like, you know, but again, yeah. people live on Google. It, it, it's yeah. like, I can't tell you how many times in a day, whether it be with my wife or my kids or, or, you know, even employ, you know, whatever that I'm like, Google it, Google, Google it, Google it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Hey, Hey dad, how many solar eclipses are there a year? Google it. Or how many solar yeah. eclipses are there? Go Google it. Google, you know, right? Like, and that was just one that came up this morning. <laughs> I mean, it's part of our language now. So everybody Google that, you know, right? Um, yeah. Um, but then from there, um, so that that's really important. Um, and, and I don't know, I, I, this may have changed, but th this was years ago, I heard the staff, but it was something like 76% of the consumer um, uh, believe, like in they, for them, reviews are as powerful and hold the same weight as a friend or family trusted member referral, you know? Yeah. So like, we know the power in these. And again, like you mentioned earlier, we are in a review economy. Like I, I try to, this is, you know, I don't need to go down this rabbit hole, but I personally try to buy as little off of Amazon as I can anymore. You know, I'm just yeah. not, you know, I try to shop local more and, and, you know, you know, whatever, but I go onto Amazon to check reviews all the time still, you know, like, <laughs> you, know, it, yeah. you know, so we're all in, we're just in this economy, you know, yeah. um, so, so a lot of weight there, but in addition to that, you know, are you doing things to then leverage these? Like, as an example, you're doing your Facebook ads, right? After yeah. people come in as a lead and maybe you're doing remarketing, you already have them as leads. So you're already doing your other follow-up. You got the automation port of it. Plus you're probably doing your phone calls and, you know, like, but then also like retargeting, where you're grabbing these reviews, creating slideshows. Like, are you doing things to, to, you know, repurpose these and leverage these after they're on there? Or has it just been one of those things where it's so powerful and it's leading because so many people are on Google that it's just, you know, growing organically that way. Yeah, no, I, I most of it is organic. Um, and you know, it, it just keeps growing. And then you can see, um, if you watch the charts and stuff, you can see how many people visit your site how many people leave your site, actually, how many people called you. Um, and, you know, it just consistently is get growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, uh, the longer it sits there, the more reviews I get. Um, but that's a great idea. I think maybe I'll steal your idea there and start doing that, um, taking these reviews that I'm getting and, and um, just posting those on Facebook. But, you know, um, I didn't want it to be a billboard. You, you know what I mean? Um, and you know, everything costs money on, on Facebook and, you know, Mark is taking a, a lot more money from a lot more people. It's just, <laughs> it, it, as yeah. he changes his system, um, you know, Mark Zuckerberg just lo loves taking money out of my pocket. So um, I will say though, man, I don't know if you're experiencing this because I know you do a lot of Facebook ads as well. And, and I, I believe from our previous conversation that you're also, you know, helping some others, you know, run Facebook ads as well for their business. Um, but man, today I am getting the best results I've ever seen, you know, and I don't know if it's, you know, uh, you know, we've seen that like what, what meta lose 20% of their stock yesterday, like, it, it, just, <laughs> you know, they're, they're just, they're just getting nailed, dude. They're just, you know, so, and I'm assuming that is because a lot of marketers are dropping. So they're not spinning the ad platform. So it's just, you know, for me, I've been cranking it up. You know, yeah. um, um, but it's like, man, the results that I'm getting now, are you seeing that right now? You know, and, and the, one reason I like to bring this up is because there's always this, you know, there can be this perception that, oh, it's oversaturated. And I'm like, yeah, it has. There was a time where I could just run whatever ad and have success with it. Now, mm -hmm. strategy is more important than it used to True. be. Um, but the results, man, like I have found it unmatched, man. Yeah, uh, I've been having some fantastic results, uh, especially for the home partners, uh, one that I have going on. Um, you know, right now, I think that a lot of people just want to rent to own, you know, they, they, they like that. Um, and so I've been having a uh, great success with that. But um, on Facebook, also, they're doing some changes. I know they I don't know if you know, they got sued by the federal fair housing. Yeah, HUD, yeah, yeah. HUD, and um, that changed a lot, you know, so what they did was not only 
you know, they left all of the housing stuff, but they started bringing it into all of the other um, types of ads too, not just housing and stuff. They're going to start bringing their uh, restrictions uh, on less and less targeting and they want more and more broader audiences. So um, yeah, they, they hundred percent did away with this, but like, you can't do a lookalike audience now for, for special ad categories for realtors, right. you know, um, you know, and, and, and I would just, uh, uh, you know, cause when you do a lot of Facebook ads, you get assigned your, your, own internal Facebook rep. So I speak to right. him weekly and I know that in 2023, they're doing away completely with the pixel, you know, like, yeah. just, like the whole cookie tracking is going to become obsolete, you know, which again, it's going to create awesome. challenges for some that don't adapt and shift. But if, they, if there's been a, a, a kind of a theme of this podcast, it's been adapt, shift, yeah. pivot, <laughs> change, That's it. I, you know, uh, uh, with that. So, um, I, I, one more follow-up question on, on Google My Business, because it has morphed into, you know, back in the day, it was really just about reviews. Now yes. it seems to be having morphed into almost like its own social media platform itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and you talked about the importance of not spamming things, so not being selly, you know, not trying to sell on there. Um, um, but you can still go out there and document, you know. Um, what you mentioned posting daily. Yeah, You know, um, well, you know, like some people are like, well, I only do an open house a week or I only, you know, list or get a couple of homes under contract a week. So maybe, you know, like what are other types of posts? Like when you mentioned that, and, and this is something I haven't done before, but I'm sitting there thinking mm -hmm. of like, okay, I'm, I'm dressed, I'm ready. I'm having my first cup of coffee in the morning, like doing a selfie, just being like, you know, um, Hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm here to serve support and help you, you know, reach out if there's any real estate needs that you need, like, you know, you know, what, what kind of content you know, because you talked about the importance of posting, you know, a lot um, of uh, it's got to be a photo. I don't think they've they've come out with videos yet, but I'm sure that Google's, uh, you know, going to come out with that sooner or later. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you definitely I, I do a lot of solds, pendings, uh, pictures of houses with, you know, um, for sale signs in front of it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'll do a lot of um, testimonial, like I'll put some testimonial things in there. Um just the pictures of a screenshot of a testimonial, I'll put that in there because not only do they see it in the reviews, but if it, if it's a really good uh, testimonial, you want to you want a picture of that out there so some people can read it, you know, and, and they relate to the story. So um, yeah, absolutely, pictures of yourself, uh, you know, um, that's going to get you branded and, and people are going to recognize you um, for that business, you know. Um, so I, I basically do a lot of house pictures, a lot of solds, a lot of pendings, and a lot of testimonial videos, and just um, a ton of that, you know. Uh, and it doesn't have to be; it, it just has to be a post, right? So it'll see it, and and because you have more activity on your on your posts, that's going to make you rank higher than others who don't post who don't have a knowledge panel. There's a difference between just having a map page and then having a knowledge panel, which is on the right-hand side. And you can see all of the, the all of the posts, the testimonials, your, you can have all of your information there. You can put different websites there. Um, so it, it's really uh, huge to just, if it's not every day, at least once a week, you know, as much as you possibly can um, post something on there. Um, I've only tried a lot of the, the, the houses for sale, houses sold, um, stuff like that. Yep. Yep. Love it. You know, um, maybe I will start doing extra stuff and seeing if that works too, but, um, yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is just my mind. I mean, it, it's just all theory for me at this point, but I'm like, okay, if you work this one city, let's just say, you know, yeah. um, well, maybe, you know, this weekend there's a big city Halloween festival and, and you take some great photos of that or maybe right. there's a Christmas parade and, you know, like just document cool things about the community, cool things about the area, you know, yeah. um, as, you know, um, um, as well as, you know, obviously real estate's going to be heavy in there. Um, yeah. And I love the idea about that's a know, great idea. Yeah, yeah. I love the idea about testimonials. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, they're on there, but then it's almost like, you know, taking those, running into Canva, making them look cool, pretty, put into quote form and then. You know, it, it's the same, but they're, a picture, they're, yeah. they look, they have a different look, a different feel, and you're almost doubling on, on the testimonials and, you know, um, all right. So, so you just finished Instant credibility. Book. Instant yeah, credibility. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you just finished this book, man. I mean, is this, is this available? When is it going to be available? Yeah. What does this look like? Actually, you know, I, um, I just printed this one out, but, um, 
I, it's I put it in a uh, video course, so I made some uh, a course with it. Um, so actually, I was for anybody you know. I, don't, I have a link. Anybody who wants to jump on the link? I have a ton of. Um, I made a whole 30 day challenge and I have a lot of offer, uh, a lot of bonuses and a lot of great stuff on the page. Um, so I'm going to give this course away free for anybody who wants to take me up uh, on my offer. Um, hopefully you may be able to post something underneath here. Or Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can you, do you, do you have, is it, is it like a complicated link that I just need to post or is so, it just a, I don't know if you can see that. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, right. let's see. Right, so it's yep. smart. It's thirty day dot smart and leads dot com or yeah. So thirty day dot smart dash n dash leads dot com. Okay, yeah, and so, so it is a difficult one, right? Yeah, as soon as we but, get wrapped up here, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get uh, I'll you, you know message you and have you send me the link so I can just copy paste it. Um, I you know I know about the visuals that those are watching us and YouTube can pause, but we get about ten times you know, the amount of uh, downloads on, on audio versus, you know, YouTube right, is yeah, so they can... watch place. So I know most people are driving down the street. So anybody that's watching or listening, if you just scroll below you, the link will be there and we'll, you know, make sure it's hyperlinked. So you can just click on it and be brought right there. Keep it, you know, super simple. Um, so it's a, it's a 30 day free, you know, uh, just so it's, it's a 30 day challenge. Um, and, and the challenge is basically, um, you know, I, I'm going to get you leads. I'm going to create an entire campaign for you. I'm going to give you um, time on the system to, to get used to it and, and get everything all. I'll set everything up for you. I don't, I'm not going to charge any, um, you know, set up fees or anything like that. Um, just because I'm on here on the podcast. I just created this last week for everybody um, who wants to take me up on it. But uh, the, the course, the, the Google My Business course, um, you know, is, is going to go free to anybody who takes me up on that. But um, if you did just want the book, I mean, um, I guess to look me up on Facebook, get a hold of me and let's have a conversation and I'll get it to you. You know, cool. um, it, it's great information. Um, it, it's a pretty good book and, and it tells you exactly what you need to do and, and how to get organic leads off of Google and how to get more Google reviews. And, um, but, you know, definitely if you, if you want more information about it, you know, just click the link, set up a call with me and, you know, I'll be more than happy to go over it. I don't want to sit here yeah and yeah all, no. you know yeah I love it. Well, and all I mean, that stuff, but. it sounds like because i mean you, you you i mean you mentioned the software that you created that allows you to you know get these google reviews to kind of you know automate a lot of the process um, um but then automate also like your facebook lead ad follow-up and and when we see automate i'm guessing that there's still maybe maybe not might still be some phone call follow-up that you're doing you know who knows what that looks like but this gives when they people, raise their hand yeah you want to give them a call for sure yeah, yeah so this gives people then a chance to you know um because it sounds like you've opened up that software to the public um and gives yeah. them a chance to test it out for 30 days you know and see if they like it as well and then you know if they after 30 days want to move forward then they can if you like it then, then yeah we can definitely perfect you know, man. Um, it, it's a, a fantastic system. It's really been working well for us. And I let um, my agents have it and it's it's working for them as well. We're really starting to uh, gain steam. Um, you know, that snowball effect going downhill, you know, it, it's really getting bigger and bigger and bigger for them. And they're starting to get recognized uh, where they didn't have a presence at all, you know. Yep. Um, so it's huge. It really is huge. And then, you know, with everything else though, you know, you have to put it all into one spot um, and, and just kind of follow up, follow up, follow up, no matter what lead it is, you, you without the follow-up, it's just a lead, right? I mean, you can call yeah. the phone book and have the same uh, success with the phone book if you don't follow up with the people, you know? Um, yeah. They, I, I mean, I, I, I heard, I heard the other day from Zillow that the average uh, 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 conversion ratio is now 0.8% for the average realtor, but the average realtor only falls up twice, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, I sit there and look at that. I'm like, man, just when you're talking about open house, Bob, I'm like, man, I got it. You know, just my email and text strips go out a thousand days and that's, you know, and then, and then of course you get the daily property alerts. And then, you know, we do a lot of phone, we do, you know, some manual component too with phone calls and, and, you know, personalized video text messages and so forth. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the follow-up is so crucial. And if you don't have the right system to help automate that and keep you on task, it just becomes an impossibility. It, it, it if becomes hard. you are lead generating at a high level, you know, that's um, right. Um, but, but and if you're not if you doing to, everything else, you don't have time to really kind of keep following up with a hundred people, you know? 
Yep. Yep. hundred percent, hundred percent, man. So, um, you know, if we, and again, anybody that's watching us now have that link right below where you can, you know, jump into and check out that, that 30 day challenge. Um, so I always like to, you know, end the, the podcast with this. I know we're going long on time, but, you know, we're running back the tapes. You've been doing this since 97. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's been a journey, man. <laughs> right? It's been a like huge it, journey. Yeah. You know, like we talked nice. about and, 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 you know, just, again, I, you know, I, I get it, man. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I try to be transparent with this, but I'm like, man, I've, you know, I've had, you know, half a dozen times where I've been in tears in the, in the corner of my office, right throwing the towel. I've, I've almost quit this industry many times. Thank God I didn't, but, and, and pushed through and, you know, and, and, and then, you know, I've had, to, it wasn't just that I succeed, you know, struggled till I made it. It's like, yeah, you know, I struggled that I, you know, make it start succeeding. It, and then you know, go backwards. <laughs> you get on that roller, that again. real estate roller coaster. Yeah, and for different reasons. Sometimes it was yeah. because I just, you know, let myself take the foot off the accelerator. I lost the momentum. I stopped the consistency. So sometimes it was self-inflicted. Sometimes yeah. it wasn't, you know, right. Um, um, uh, COVID is an example of that. You know, um, this current market that we're experiencing right now, uh, two months ago was the first month in my career that we had more cancellations of our pendings, we had more cancellations than we actually had closing. That was the first month of my career that that's, you know, right. So some of these come, you know, like federal reserve, increasing interest rates and economy, like some of these things are out of our, out of our control. But with that being said, everything that you know, now today, if Raymond today could go back and give, you know, Raymond, you know, back in 97 or any point that you want to insert this self, but if, if you're sitting on a park bench and you're able to yourself today is able to go have a conversation with your younger self and give yourself a couple pieces of advice that you feel would have, you know, fast forwarded the success, you know, journey, your success journey that would have maybe eliminated some of those pains or whatever. Um, you know, what would that, what would those, those pieces of advice be? You, you know, I, I go back and I, I would tell myself to brand myself, build a brand, uh, get visible um, because that's the snowball effect that's going to bring you business over and over again. I mean, you can go back and you can advertise anywhere um, and those are great. But if you don't get those testimonial videos, you don't get those testimonials, you don't brand yourself, you don't make yourself visible, um, you know, I, I, now online, but back then it was in paper and print, you know, um, and that's what helped me, you know, with the homes magazines because we were visible, you know, everybody was grabbing those magazines visible, right? So as times changed, internet came in, a lot of different things I've changed throughout the past. But um, now, you know, it, it's Google, right? Um, and you know, they had the Google slap way back when, you know, but um, that kind of stopped a lot of advertising um, back then for Google. And it's still kind of pricey compared to all the other um, advertising platforms. But uh, if I can go back and tell myself one thing, it would be, hey, brand yourself, you know, uh, get those testimonials early on, start asking uh, for the testimonials. If you don't ask, you're not going to get right. So yep. a lot of these people let their clients go and they don't ever ask for testimonial never. And, you know, I'm big on asking for those video testimonials. Now it used to be, Hey, can you, you know, review me on Google because you know, that's, or, or on Zillow, that's where, you know, Zillow realtor, you know, send me a review there. And I never even followed up, never sent them a, a request and, you know, it was a transaction. And then, you know, that was it. I never had any follow-up. Um, so huge is, is follow up. I would tell myself, follow up, follow up, follow up with all of those customers that you talk to and they weren't ready yet. Follow up, get a system to follow up and then uh, get yourself visible uh, wherever you can be, wherever times change. I know, you know, in the future, um, Google may not even be around, who knows, or may not even work, but there's going to be something else. And, um, you know, something else is going to fall. So make sure you stay on top of that as, a, as you know, your social media changes and stuff, you want to be visible. So anywhere that you can be visible. Um, I don't know if I would uh, go back and tell myself to cold call and learn cold calling again, although it, it, it has helped a lot, but uh, it was a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and a lot of, you know, uh, uncomfortable feeling of, unless maybe I didn't learn the right way to cold call, but I think I learned from a lot of really great cold callers. Um, and um, it was always trying to sell yourself to somebody who didn't want your services. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so uh, that was a lot of wasted time for me, I think, um, because, you know, I was just always a kind person, but I didn't want to have to sit there and and force 
myself down anybody's throat, you know, and, and that's what it seemed like cold calling was. So if I could tell myself anything, it was brand and then follow up with all the customers and start learning advertising, um, whatever platform it is, learn, learn, learn or hire somebody to do it for you, but get some advertising going on because, um, you know, that that's what's going to bring you in business. And also that open house strategy. Um, I, again, I'm going to plug you because um, the, the boot camp was absolutely life changing for me. Um, you know, even though I was in the business and I had all that that experience, you you opened my eyes to a lot of different strategies, a lot of different mindset. Um, you know, I, I always thought that, you know, hey, there was a good market and a bad market and the bad markets. Well, we're not supposed to do as much business as we're you know, are in, in a good market. And that's what a lot of people think. But then, you know, um, you had opened my eyes to that, that, hey, you know, it doesn't matter whether we're in a good market, bad market, sideways market. There's always a transaction. And our job is to put ourselves in the middle. Um, so whatever that platform is that you can go do that and get yourself in the middle of any transaction, whether it be, um, you know, going out and, and meet and greet different places, doing BNI meetings or whatever, you, you get yourself visible. Um, and, and that's what I would say to my myself. Don't just sit there and, and wait for the business to come in because it's not going to come in if yeah. you don't do anything. Awesome you know. stuff. Powerful stuff, my man. Uh, and those watching and listening, information without implementation is just a sort of delusion. It's not information that has power. It's taking that information, going out there, taking action on it. That gives you the power to create the life that you know you want and deserve. And Raymond shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you today. Make sure that you take something that you learn, go out there, implement, go out there, and execute, and truly appreciate you guys being here, watching and listening. And Raymond, this was a, a lot of fun, my friend. I truly appreciate Absolutely. you taking time. Absolutely. Thank and you again. I, I hope everybody got uh, something out of this and that, that can help them. And um, thank you again, Joshua. I appreciate it. Yep. 100%, my friend. All right, you guys. Thank you again. And we will see you next time. Peace.